Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, welcome to this, to this talk about Uvas Kurnokopia. Uh, Uvas Kurnokopia is a threat modeling tool in the form of a card game. Um, it's to assist software development teams identify security requirements in agile and conventional and formal development processes. And I'm one of the leaders. And with us today we have Grant. Hello, Grant. Maybe you can introduce yourself. Hey there. Thanks, Jan. Uh, yeah, I, I'm Grant Hogus. I wish I could be there in the room with you guys. Um, but I'm glad to be joining virtually. Uh, as as Jan said, uh, three of us are working on Codacopia. Um, but as Jan has got lost to talk about, I'm going to let him drive straight in. Um, yeah, so, so the, the, third, uh, the third leader is, of course, Colin Watson, that has been a long-term contributor for several WASC projects, including uh, funding the WASC pro uh, project. He's also the funding father of WASP Snake and Ladders and WASP Automated Threat Handbook for web applications. So, and, um, and today, as two, of the three co-leaders of Uvas Kornokopia. We are very proud to share that we finally has released Uvas Kornokopia version 2. And this summer, it's actually 10 years since Uvas Kornokopia was first printed professionally by Uvas, and it's, so it's sort of like a 10 years anniversary for us. And uh, why is this important, and why should you care about this? Well, I personally believe that by doing this, we're making threat modeling available for everyone everywhere, and we are ensuring that young professionals also can participate in the conversation. And I believe that that last part is what makes this so important, because, um, firstly, because it will increase awareness and knowledge about threat modeling uh, for absolutely everyone involved in software development. And secondly, because we in agile processes have no choice but to trust our developers. They have the contract with us that they are allowed to do whatever they need to do since they are self-organizing and cross-functional. And thirdly, because there are too few of us and there are too many of them, and too little time and resources for us to be there for everyone, everywhere, all at once. So when I started um, as a web designer 16 years ago, while I finished university, we hadn't learned uh, about threat modeling. Uh, we didn't learn much about application security. And even though we had heard something about Uvasp back then, uh, there was no such thing as Kunukupia. But uh, despite that, I ended up working as a web designer, and I learned the importance of threat modeling and having backups. But that was only after the website I was building got hacked twice, uh, which uh, wasn't uh, all that strange, because if you look at this email I got from the hosting provider, you will find a password that I liked to use back then. Um, so I used to be a very misguided individual, and uh, by the way, actually, there are five, at least five security blunders in this email. Uh, and uh, would you be, uh, be surprised if I told you that this hosting provider is actually still around today? It has survived being a home for cyber criminals. Uh, if only I knew about Uvas Kronokopia, if only I knew about... Uh, uh, security, uh, secure, uh, secure uh, software development at all. Um, but that's exactly my point, because how are you going to reach young professionals like I used to be? Um, and uh, have a meaningful uh, threat modeling session with them. There are a whole generation of developers right now that is learning to program through ChatGPT and Copilot. And you are not going to reach them by doing whiteboarding sessions with them. And I know what some of you might just be thinking, because why don't we all just feed all the cornucopia pl uh, cards plus uh, a bunch of other threats into an AI and ask the AI to threat model for us? Um, well, that would probably work, but then we will stop doing threat modeling we will all die and eventually machines will take over the world. So it may be useful to do some threat modeling before doing that. 
but it's the same for everyone else as well. And uh, there is a screaming lack of IT professionals in the world, and the industry is answering that need but by looking for professionals in fields completely unrelated to information technology. And we need to do threat modeling with them too. We need tools that includes, not excludes. And I also think that by using what's called you will be able to scale your application security efforts much better as well. Uvas Kornokopia is threat modeling for everyone, everywhere. Everyone can participate. Everyone learns something new about application security. And anyone can score points and do threat modeling and have fun while playing the game. So it started a little bit more than 11 years ago as a response to training aid. Colin Watson was working part-time for himself as a web application security consultant and part-time for Blackfoot, who had a lot of clients that were subject to the payment card industry data security standard. And in the summer of 2012, he was asked to arrange for two separate groups, one on Monday morning and another on Tuesday morning, and they would last for three hours. So he knew that it would be a high risk of uh, boredom, fatigue, and people switching off during the set training. So he decided he wanted to play a game with them. He had seen and was inspired by Adam Schustak's game, Elevation of Privilege, but he had struggled to apply it to website applications. And he had recently been reading Charles Stross' novel, Singularity Sky, which describes cornucopia machines with the ability to produce a multitude of things uh, and in the same way, the game he wanted to make would span an abundance of tax and web app vulnerabilities. So using the horn of plenty concept, um, he shows the name Cornucopia. And in the fall of 2012, he published a Microsoft Word document called Uvas Cornucopia e-commerce website edition. But then nothing happened. Because if you wanted to play the game back then, oh, you had to print out all the cards with a desktop printer, use a pair of scissors, and cut out all the 80 cards, like with the deck of cards I have here. Then afterwards, you will probably have to laminate them in plastic before you cut them out again. I got introduced to Uvas Bergkornkopia about three years ago, so I had to do the same thing. Because nobody was selling the decks anymore, they were all out of print. So it took me three working days only to prepare the deck that I have here before I could have the sessions with one of the uh, development teams. But then the, since the old uh, e-commerce uh, require, uh, you know, e-commerce edition only uses ASVS3. I also had to take each of the ASVS3 requirements, which is displayed on the, which is displayed on the face of the cards, uh, which are almost all of them, and then I have to create a complete mapping of ASVS3 to ASVS4, which was not very helpful and quite time consuming. So if that was, so it was quite obvious that we had to do something. So I, so I had created a deck with the ACS4 mapping. Then I could ha have hands-on sessions with the team. Uh, but not only that, the team themselves could also do threat molding. Uh, so we started to use like Uvas uh, Threat Dragon and Uvas Cornucopia. And we also printed out all the cards that scored and placed them on the whiteboard like this. And then after placing the card we felt was interconnected together in groups, we took a picture, uploaded it to a digital whiteboarding solution called Figma, and, there, and thereby the distributed team could complete a secure design for their web API and from almost all, uh, for, um, by doing it, or like a security focused user story mapping. And from almost having no threats, no threat models at all, we managed to do threat modeling almost every sprint. Then when we got the visit from the ISO 27001 auditors in the fall, we were able to show them the Uvas Kornokopia deck that we had, together with all the work that we had been doing on threat modeling. And the response from the auditors was completely ecstatic. Uh, 
uh, they had absolutely no words at all, no comments. And um, uh, when we did the recertification in, uh, for the ISO 27001-2022, the development department actually managed to get the perfect score with no additional remarks or suggestions for improvements. Uh, so this ability to make auditors happy was also what started the ball for Ulas Kupia back in January 2013. So when it got mentioned in the updated version of PCID, PCID SSS guidance document. And long story short, Uvas Kupia got started as a Uvas project. Version 1 was released, pro uh, professionally printed by the Uvas Foundation and distributed to attendees at the AppSec USA 2014, and uh, that's 10 years ago. So this summer, 10 years after, we have released Uvas Kornokopia version 2, and as part of the release, we have made sure that all the ACS requirements displayed on the face of the cars are updated to the latest stable release of ACS 4. We have also changed the name of the edition from e-commerce uh, to website app to cater for the fact that the cards can be used for any type of website app, not only e-commerce purposes. Uh, and then further work uh, on the data and code to generate uh, the, the files for the cards themselves, the cases and the folders leaflets, and the legacy guide documents has also been undertaken. And this code also generates cases, um, cards, leaflets in two physical sizes. The smaller it is often called bridge size cards, and the larger is uh, tired size cards. All these uh, version 2 files are now immediately available in six languages, English, French, Spanish, Dutch, Norwegian, and Portuguese. And that's due to efforts of past and current volunteers over the last 10 years. Um, back at the beginning, Colin also imagined uh, that others could create a similar game for mobile apps. And perhaps it would be named Uvas Kurnokopia Mobile App Edition. And so we have also created and printed the mobile app edition. So there is now a completely new edition for threat modeling mobile apps. So this Kunukupia mobile app edition is released as version one, and it is mapped to the Uvas mobile application security verification standard version two, and the mobile application security testing guide version 1.7. And uh, only available in English for now, uh, but it's also in two physical sizes. We will first print uh, the tarot size cards. Uh, and like the original, the completely new edition of Kunkupia also has six suites of 13 cards, plus two jokers, with the suite names drawn from MSVS platform and code, authentication and authorization, network and storage, um, or the tequila sunrise suite that uh, Toby likes to call it. Resiliency, cryptography, and cornucopia. So, which contains threat related to uh, MSVS privacy requirements. And there's also have added some nasty card related to mobile malware. Um, the, when creating the deck, we weighted the mobile deck using CVSS scoring so that the severity of the threat increases with the face value of the card. At the same time, the cornucopia uh, suite is made so that it, relatively speaking, has cards that always trumps um, other cards, not according to only according to the game rules, but also according to the severity of the threat that displayed on the cards, so that it's uh, a bit more satisfying to actually play and be able to play the Kunkupia suite. We also created the deck ensuring that all the MSVS requirements and all the 82 M MASTG tests that are used are applicable in order to mitigate AT threats. Uh, which means that as long as you play the game enough times, you can apply the tests and the requirements of the uh, cards, and you should be able to pass the MAS verification with flying colors. And regarding colors, the colors are actually taken from the MAS project. So when making the old e-commerce deck, Colin thought that it was a bit boring with the uh, uh, the, uh, if the threat actors on the cards didn't have any names, which is the case for Elevation of Privilege. And he wanted to make it about community, so he took the names 
from members in the UVAS foundation and use them as threat actors for the game cards. So I wanted to continue that uh, tradition, so I selected some names from staff members uh, of the board and project members and chapter leaders from every continent around the world. Uh, and one cool thing about that is that people are posting their cards on social media. So you have people like Toby posting, getting comments, and having some laughs while promoting the game. So in admin control uh, where I work, we started to use a prototype of the mobile app edition back in March this year. So I went to our Visma competency center and in Slovenia, and I used uh, mobile app developers um, as guinea pigs for the new mobile app edition. So it was um, late in the afternoon during which they had been sitting for like six hours in meetings. So I took up these Two Norwegian bears, and I said, "Okay, these are two. Uh, these are two. These are two bears, and each are called two captains. They are called that because they are really strong, and there are two of them." Um, I and they will be the prices for the game. So I don't know if anyone has heard about the eyeball effect. So the eyeball effect is the effect of which the quality of the conversation that you will be having next. It can be measured depending on the si relative size of the, the list, uh, eyes of the listener. So that was the biggest eyeballs I ever have seen. <laughs> and it was like watching the championships of Kunokopia. It was like, uh, yeah, it was like Champions League. And uh, I, I really must say, Slovenians are so easy to work with. Uh, Kunokopia is the Latin word for abundance, and we are not satisfied with only using two card games. Uh, we want to use all kinds of games, as long as they are fun and can help increase application security awareness and posture. Uh, but we, have also, we, we also welcome others to use our templates and card converters so we create, so, uh, to create their own card game. And if anyone has an idea for, idea for security or privacy card games, we would love to promote it, and uh, we can help you to set things up. Um, Uva's uh, Kunokopia card generator tool can take an InDesign document and the translation specified in multiple YAML documents and turn them into print-on-demand card decks and editions so that you can have a designer focusing on creating the design using Scribus or InDesign while you are creating the text you want for the cards. So this way you can use our tools to change the text with simple a text editor and uh, translate your game into multiple languages, versions and editions. All of this is released on GitHub under a Creative Commons uh, attribution share like license. And recently we also did translation for Adam Schustak's Elevation of Privilege game into Spanish. So if you go to the Uvas Kunokopia project on GitHub, you can now also download the latest version of Elevation of Privilege in English and Spanish as well. During the pandemic, Grant, would you like to tell this story? Are you still with us? Okay, so uh, I can't hear Grant, so I will uh, just tell this story. So this is uh, actually during the pandemic when we no longer could meet up. Uh, and play Kunokopia physically, Grant Ongers got the idea of challenging uh, his colleague, Toby Irvin, by betting a dinner at a fancy restaurant that he would not be able to create and complete online version. Um, so within the weekend. Uh, so he lost the bet, and so Kopi was born, and uh, Toby got din a dinner. So for a long time, uh, Grant and Kobe from Secure Delivery has been working towards finishing the digital version of Kunkopia. And now as part of Uvas Kunkopia version 2, uh, Toby Irvin and uh, me and Xavier uh, Gouda, uh, together with Grant, has updated the design and we have also added the mobile app edition to the online game. On top of that, Grant and Toby have decided to donate Kopi to the Uvas Foundation. So it should now be immediately available uh, from uh, kopiovas.org, where you can play the website app, the mobile app, uh, or Elevation of Privilege for free with your team, even if you're not uh, uh, present at the same location. Uh, we have also created a whole set of logos, and we have started to create um, print 
uh, out some ideas for prices that people can use to give out to their colleagues. And all of these are completely free to download. You can go to our website or our GitHub uh, repository. You can download them, use them, whatever you like. Um, if you are going to use them commercially, then we'll ask uh, you to perhaps give a small donation to the foundation. But otherwise, change them, use them, and spread them around as you like. So even though Uva Skolnokopia is more than 10 years, we will still have a lot of plans. First and foremost, we want to get ready for collaboration with uh, other Uva projects, OpenCRE and Uva Stretragen being uh, two obvious choices. Uh, we also want to improve the main website. We have a lot of extra information related to the cards themselves that can be used in relation to the game. And we want to be able to publish that, this, and make it available so that it's easy to find and read for the players. Uh, we also want to improve copy. We still have a lot to do in order to be able to provide online resources readily available in multiple languages. And we will be working towards making sure that that is the case. So we also want more editions. We're not going to wait another 10 years before we're going to publish the next edition. Uh, it's a bit early to say what that will be about, but we think that it will be probably about web services. Um, we also are going to uh, add extra effort into making sure that all the editions stay better up to date regarding their requirement mappings. That is featured on the cards. And we have already made some plans regarding that. But we also need your help. So if you would like to contribute, don't, don't hesitate to get in touch with us on Slack, GitHub, uh, Google mailing list, whatever you uh, would like. Uh, then it's printing. So together with the UBAS Foundation, we are working with uh, several vendors and we'll be providing the decks uh, with the original UBAS branding. And the decks will most likely uh, be available for sale uh, in, in the next weeks or so. Uh, in the meantime, you can go and play Ukonkupia at kupiauvas.org. And I was thinking that um, we could have a small competition here. So whoever are able to ask a original question, and I don't know if you have this uh, uh, microphone going around. Do you have like a microphone that we can use? So the competition is this. Whoever can ask a original question will get a, 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 a cornucopia deck. So raise your hands. You said original question, right? Yes. Okay. Do you all know what is last come? Sorry? Last come. Last come. Do we know what last come is? It's not about the product, but it is related. Really yeah, it's original question. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah, back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's make it about Kunkupia as well. <laughs> what was the funniest um, giveaway to a f to a winner after a Kunkupia session you gave away? Yeah, I um, I think like there was like uh, the, the funniest must have been uh, sort of like uh, uh, giving away these like two beers probably. Uh, because, uh, they had, uh, I mean, Slovenians, they just love beer. And you, you could see they were so happy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was really nice. So, uh, how would you motivate people with the online version, you know, playing for remote workers or whatever? What sort of prizes or giveaways would you suggest for that? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, of course, much more motivated to actually be in the same room. So I would sort of like uh, challenge that and uh, say that, you know, go out there and uh, travel a bit and see people as well. Use this as an opportunity to actually do some networking. Uh, so that, that for me is very valuable. And when you're in, in the same room as the people, you work much more efficient. So what usually takes uh, three hours, you can do in one and a half. Uh, at the same time, you know, there's a lot of other things that you can get going as well when you do that. Uh, if you do online, you can, of course, 
make some, uh, you know, uh, use stickers or whatever you want to give out prices. I mean, we have like uh, lots of strict stickers that we are giving out here and, you know, to be able to print some and actually send it to someone, that's not really a big thing. Uh, also t-shirts and all these kinds of things. If you want to sort of like make it uh, sort of like a bigger event. Yeah. I've been threat modeling quite a long time with the word documents that I quite love and I don't want to move to any other thing. But if I could one day integrate your car tech with that word document, I would be very happy. So have you ever thought about something like this? Uh, sorry. So actually you have your own suite. As, is that no, this? I have, I have a, a word document where I document my threat modeling in as always. And if I could get like a link between the cards and the, the word documents, that might be something I want to. Ah, yes. Uh, okay. So link between the cards and the word documents. Or like referencing. That's something I can easily build in, I guess. Yes, that's true. So actually what we do is that, um, we will very, very soon, um, have a lot of reference material that we will, uh, publish. And uh, then we will make the decks with the QR codes where you can actually use mobile and actually get more information online on each card. So in that way, that will help whoever is sort of like is playing the game. Thank you. Yes? One, one second. Yes? Uh, what was the motivation for the outfit today? Oh, okay. So uh, I, it's first of all, this is a celebration, and second of all, it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> I hope you got that. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, I think that who, uh, yes, so just give the, send the uh, microphone around, yes. Uh, Cornucopia is great, I've been using it for years, and thank you for making it. Yeah. However, it doesn't cover quite a lot of uh, application threats. And I feel that you you basing it on a normal deck of cards yeah. um, kind of limits. Do you have any plans for creating cornucopia expansions? Of course. Of course. <laughs> so it's just coming. It says that we need to get the time to actually do this, but this is something that we would love to do for different projects, type of teams, all of this. Yes. But uh, yes, one thing at a time, but it's coming. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a quick question. So yeah. if, if we would want to play Cornucopia and you have a room full of developers, but you also want to get everybody else involved, like team members that work with the developers, not just developers, would this be a game for them as well. Oh, I'm not sure if I got all of it. I think it would be because I think it's a great teaching tool. So it depends on who the performers are on either end of the game. So if you have something like that, then it would be really useful. You use like this to me. Somebody has to pretend to be a dev, pretend to be a threat actor, so that you can kind of make it harder or not as hard as you can put this. Stay later. We're going to play. Yes, that's the spirit. Yeah. Oh, and please, uh, also, when you can also, uh, like, I have, we have both mobile and website app. So please, if you feel that you need another type, just ask Star for that. Okay. Uh, just one question. Like, uh, have you played it with the bigger audience and, uh, how, what was the response from them? So what was, well, the I wonder, played? maybe we can do that now. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yes. So we are handing out the decks. So if you want, you know, find, uh, go, go together with groups out there and I will try to help you to actually set things up. Uh, there's basically one thing that you need to do. You need to make a small drawing of a small system. Doesn't mean, doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. And then, uh, I encourage you to actually ask the four questions that Adam, uh, Sh um, Shustak actually asks, uh, always. And that is like, what are we working on? Uh, what can go wrong? What can you do about it? And what could we do better? So th that, that's the, yes. So, so if you do that, it will be fantastic. And I will be around and help you with it if you want to. Yeah. Thanks. This is not a question. So I'm making the rules. So <laughs> I am the uh, leader of the MASBS project yeah. and I was moved when I saw this, like 
You did an excellent job that was made with love. Yeah. You even follow the colors, <laughs> official colors. So that really moved me. So thank exactly. you very I have the colors here now, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Um, yes. How did you end up on uh, the design, or, and who who uh, who is the artist? That's me. You're the artist. Yes. Um, so I did uh, most of the work. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, mm. I love it. Yes. Uh, of course, it's based on the original design, uh, but we needed to change it a bit since the origin was a bit um, sort of like we, we didn't really know where it was from. It was actually I think it was from Blackfoot originally. And uh, they are a commercial com uh, company, so we wanted to make something new that actually is a bit colorful, and so we ended up with that. Yeah. And of course, listen. If you uh, if you use our logos, don't feel uh, feel free to change them. You do that whatever you want with them. They are open source. You're welcome. Some games sometimes can be longer than expected. So what tips can you give to not extend the, the game too much? Oh, the threat modeling. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so um, that it's a very good idea to uh, beforehand actually narrow down the scope. So set the scope first. That's what I would say. Then the threat modeling be becomes much better. So smaller scope, better threat modeling. So in a simil um, similar vein to that, Question: Is the ideal number of players that you think is more productive? Well, uh, of course, if it's, uh, if there's a lot of players, it can take a bit longer time. So a smaller uh, group is actually better. Uh, if uh, there's a lot of players, maybe an indication that you actually have several things that you're working on. So then you can maybe can break them up into groups and do it together. So that would be an idea, maybe. Initial diagram splits up at that stage and then have different groups. Exactly. I mean, what we do in our company is that we basically do it per feature. So every new feature that comes out, we do threat modeling. And this is actually according to the ISO standard because they actually say uh, uh, on their secure coding, uh, chapter 8 to 28, that you should be, should be doing a secure design, threat modeling, and the architecture. So, yeah. More of a question on content. Do you think an AIML app specific should be a new version or just an expansion? Or uh, app specific? Like AIML. AI. Yes. I mean, uh, the thing that I noticed about AI is that it's not that different. And there is actually uh, games out there for machine learning. So if you go to Agile Stationery, uh, which is a company that actually... Um, uh, prints uh, these games, and they will also print our game in the beginning, but we will try to get our own web shop up and uh, running as well. Um, there you can actually find this machine learning game as well. Uh, yes. Here, um, how much training do you need to play Cornucopia and run a session? So Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't think you need any experience running in a session. It helps to have a bit of experience. Like I would check out Adam Shusak's uh, book about threat modeling because he's fantastic to teach this to people that's not familiar with threat modeling at all. And um, uh, then um, I think that the, everyone can participate. Like I had like uh, QA testers and the project managers, designers, you know, anyone can participate. Of course, for designers, it's easier for them to participate when they are this, uh, part of the development uh, team and actually contributing to the design. Uh, so if the, you're already just changing something that's already there, then it's very hard for them to get the context. So I would be, you know, thinking about that. In just a follow up, is there, is it important to have someone that knows threat modeling in the room? No, I, uh, well, I mean, I, I, what, the way that I did it was that, okay, I started this and then suddenly the team came to me, ah, we are going to do some threat modeling. Ah, okay. And, uh, then it just did. And 
that was great. They, they did a great job. So they're like different teams have different uh, maturities and some may need the help and others may not. So that's just something that you need to uh, figure out. Yeah, it's kind of an extension to that question is, are there any training materials that can help roll this out with a security champion program or, or something? Okay, so we don't have any security champion program or anything like that. I mean, I don't believe in so strongly in security champions. It's a good thing, but I, uh, my philosophy is that everyone in the team should be security champions. And uh, that is what we do with uh, Uvas Kornokopia. Hi. Um, do you ever have the need to redo the exercise? Uh, example, if a project has, like, the specs have changed too much uh, from when you did it at first, like, uh, yeah, you would reconsider redoing it. Of course, yes. If it's uh, changed considerably, we do another session. So what we would do is that basically we have like we do a initial threat modeling for the first sprint. Then, if we see that things are changing considerably for the next sprint then we do a revisit of that model and we change it as well. And uh, what we do actually with Threat Dragon, which I think is uh, genius, is that, for example, we link up with the JIRA issues so that we have each of the threats linking to a JIRA issue so that we have an everything in JIRA. And then um, once they finish the JIRA issue, we go back to th uh, Threat Dragon and say, okay, mitigate it, right? So I can revisit the model and make sure that everything is taken care of. Um, is there a containerized version or a version available so you can self-host internally? So I had a bit of a look on the GitHub and I could see you could build the printed decks from the source files there, but is there something for self-hosting the mobile and web versions of Kofi? Okay, so self-hosting of the online solution, is that you're thinking about? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yes. So the, 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 the online solution is also uh, registered under a GPL. So you can run it yourself as long as you're not doing it commercially. So that's no problem. So the only, uh, only challenge there is that it is built in Elixir, which is sort of like a completely obscured language that almost nobody knows. Uh, but I actually didn't know any Elixir before I started this. Um, I learned Elixir in a matter of one day. So I actually did, uh, took all the new deck and actually added it to um, the online version in a matter of just an afternoon without actually having no knowledge about the language. Yeah. Um, hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, great stuff. Um, what would be the um, uh, good amount of time to give uh, to developers for the for to play time wise? Uh, time wise, like how long you would like the game plus? Well, that really depends. Like uh, I would think about the uh, uh, sort of like the how long the team is able to stay concentrated. Sort of like that. So it's actually a psychological question. So yeah, I will think about that. If it's if it's a big system, do several sessions. And I suppose the uh, sessions grow shorter with time. Yes. So normally, um, like for example, think about the theater play. So a theater play lasts for ninety minutes. That should be the length that you should uh, you know aim for. There's the reason why theater plays no. Uh, have a certain length is because of the uh, how long you are able to keep concentration. Okay, so now uh, afterwards um, you can go and play. I will talk to you. If there are more decks to give out, uh, you can come and ask me questions afterwards as well. So. I would just thank you all for coming, and I hope you had a great time, and uh, thank you all for joining.